Hello, I am David Anderson, the bridge pastor at Sylvania United Church of Christ. I welcome you to this video and uh, hope it will be one way in which we can connect with one another. Just a couple of announcements of upcoming uh, videos. One is uh, we have our weekly Keeping in Touch video with the staff members. I invite you to join or to watch. It's released on Tuesdays. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and Mary Meadows will be leading us in our worship experience. So I hope you'll be able to join us for that. And then on Monday, Thursday, we will be doing a virtual communion service. Last week, I talked about the phrase cosmic optimism and hope that uh, Richard Rohr's wrote about when he wrote about St. Bonaventure who lived in the 13th century. Bonaventure was a, a man of faith, a mystic, and Richard Rohr says his entire life was lived with a sense of optimism and hope, a cosmic optimism and hope. That's a good phrase for us to remember during this time of the pandemic, pandemic as we see the globalness of this disease and not to lose sight of that beneath all of creation, the beginning of creation, the end toward which creation goes, is the God who in the beginning said, let there be light. And there was light and a world was created. And that world continues through the process of evolution. And God is in the midst of it, the sustainer of it, a part of it, and it will be led to fulfillment. And whether or not you are able to fully embrace the phrase that uh, Richard Roars has given us, I hope you will meditate and reflect upon it at least in a more hopeful way uh, during this difficult time. My question is then, what becomes, how is this incarnated into our lives? How is there a way of seeing this in our daily lives? And my answer is, it is in those people who have helped lead us to ourselves. It is in those people who have helped us become ourselves. And in becoming ourselves, feel connected to God. That the two are almost one. That the realization of ourselves and the realization of God come together. So it is incarnated, this cosmic understanding, is incarnated in the relationships that we have with one another. I would like to focus on two of those relationships uh, that I experienced when I was a young man. And to do that, I'm going to show you a picture. It's taken over 52 years ago. It is on the Sunday of my ordination. The two gentlemen standing on either side of me are Dr. Kavit and Dr. Mai. Both of them were speakers at my ordination service and also my professors at seminary. Uh, they were great men and I was honored to have them as my uh, speakers at my ordination. Uh, and this picture, as faded as it is, definitely a faded photograph, has sat on a bookshelf in every study I have had in every church I have served all through my 52 years as a pastor. But what I want to tell you about with those men is how influential they were uh, in my life. But first of all, to give you a little background, Dr. Kavit uh, was from Germany. And at the end of World War II had been incarcerated in a concentration camp. He never spoke of this experience uh, to his students, but we were all well of it, aware of it. The other professor was Dr. Mai. Uh, Dr. Mai later went on to perform, uh, officiate at my, my wedding, uh, and went on to become the Dean of Fuller Theological Seminary in California. But I had both of these men uh, in seminary, and they were my favorite professors. Dr. Mai taught me Greek, 
and Dr. Kavit was my systematic theology professor. First though, let me tell you what they were not to me. They were not buddies. They were not best friends to me. I forever remained their student and they were my teacher. There was that relationship between us. That is why I could never refer to them other than as Dr. Kavit and Dr. Mai. Also, other than Dr. Mai officiating at my wedding, we never remained in touch uh, after I graduated from seminary. They were not, it was not the kind of relationship that was ongoing, even with birthday cards or, or Christmas cards. They were there for a season of my life, but they were such an important season of my life. And I want you to think about these people in, that you have in your life not necessarily the best friends, not necessarily the family members, but those who were a part of your life during uh, uh, your growing into yourself. Those that maybe stood one or two steps uh, behind your best friends and family members, but were an important part of your life in helping you to understand your journey of faith and uh, your sense of, of who you were as a person. That's what Dr. Kavit and Dr. Mai were to me. And they were in two special ways. One was in their shared body of knowledge. I was always impressed with their dedication to their vocation. They were both truly scholars. I remember often on early Saturday mornings walking around the campus and seeing Dr. Mai uh, come into the campus so that he could do some work in his study. But it was as though they respected their field of work. They were committed to it. And a part of their commitment to it was ensuring that it was passed on. And I hope that we, you have had those people in your life that have served the same purpose that have helped you see the importance of your vocation, the importance of what you are doing in this life, and that you treat that with respect and honor and a sense of dedication and calling. That's what Dr. Mai and Dr. Kavit gave to me. And the second thing they gave to me was an awareness that they took an interest in me. I was never the best student. I was never an A student. But always I felt that there was a connection I had with, with these two men. I know I was not the favorite student of all, but I know they had a concern for me. And their concern was that they could pass on to me their body of knowledge of what uh, they had learned and what was part of their vocation. But also they had a concern for me as a person that I develop as a person who felt called to ministry. Always, always, I felt them with me and beside me. And if you remember that picture, one of the uh, characteristics of it that I like so much is that when you look at the picture, as faded as it is, those two men are on either side of me. And that is the way it is in life. We have those people who come and stand beside us. It's not just the one person, but there's one on one side and one on another, both seeking to lead us to ourselves, to lead us to God, to help us become all that we are meant to be. And as we become all that we are meant to be, as we become what God intended us to be, uh, we fulfill that evolutionary process of, or become a part of that evolutionary process that is in the hands of God. This past week, a member of our church sent me an email, uh, Jeff and Ruth Ann Finch, and in it they listed different ways that we are tied to one another that we weave together. And I'd like to read you the incidences that they uh, came up with. The first is mountain climbers stay linked using safety ropes, ropes and harnesses to ensure all remain safe. Second, firefighters entering a certain situation deplore all types of devices and procedures to ensure 
they can stay in touch. Third, astronauts on spacewalks tethered to the mothership to avoid floating away. And then most of all, this third way that I'd really like that they have given, and little children on school walk hold hands to ensure no one wanders off. And that's the thing of it. All through our lives, there are people holding our hands to ensure our safety. And even during this time, when we are apart, there are those people who stand beside us and help us along the way and in our journey. I'd like to conclude with two things. First is a scripture reading from Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. And then I'd like to say a prayer that was written by Richard Rohrs. And it was written during this time, but written for the people of Chautauqua. And so I'm going to read it, but then I'd ask as I read it, you have in mind the people of our church, Sylvania United Church of Christ. First of all, these words from Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. That's how I feel about Dr. Mai and Dr. Kavit. I am confident of this that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Loving God, all seems adrift. Is this what it takes to let us know we are one? Is this what it takes to make us live as one? Is this the high price of love and solidarity? We long to regather at Chautauqua. We long to regather at Sylvania United Church Sanctuary. In such love with you and all our suffering world, may we hold one another till then. May you hold us. Let it be so. Let it be so. Amen.